and now we will give a floor to one among us who is a big fighter. And we are very happy that, again, the president of the European Parliament is a socialist one. So you know I'm sp who I'm speaking about. It's our president of the European Parliament, Martin Schulz. Please, the floor is yours. Dear friends, dear colleagues, dear comrades, I want to start by saying a word to Sergei. Thank you very much for your speech, Sergei. Thank you very much for your leadership in the Socialist Party of Europe. Thank you very much. You are leading your party and your country in difficult times. And you are leading the Socialist Party of Europe in difficult times. I think there are not so often leaders in Europe who are so strong that they can recognize publicly, yes, I made a mistake, I correct it. That shows that you are a man with sovereignty. That shows that you are not a one-sided man who is convinced that everything he is doing is always right, that shows that you are a reflecting personality and that from time to time we are all human beings, we make perhaps a mistake, but a statesman is somebody who is able to say, okay, I correct and then I continue and therefore I honor expressively here what you did. This is a strong leader to be also sometimes self-critical instead of those who have always, always the right on their side. This is the difference between us and the right wing. And therefore, we are proud about you and of your leadership and count, as Achim Post and Hannes Swoboda said, on the support of those who lead the Socialist Party, the group and other organizations together with you, Sita Gomai, or not you, in a way, I can't do it, I must admit, so I'm not so near, also physically, like Zita is to you. So, nevertheless, thank you very much for the invitation. Comrades and uh, dear friends, how is it possible to make Europe fairer? Sage like said we must bring Europe back to the citizens. Yes, I think he is completely right. We must raise the question, what are people expecting from us? And to start, to give the answer, I think we should describe the situation in the European Union as it is. Europe is in a bad shape. And in my eyes, the European Union is really threatened. It is at risk because more and more people doubt about the European Union. And one advice to all of us, we should not make the mistake that everybody who is criticizing the European Union should be taken as a Eurosceptic or an anti-European. No, the other way around, I criticize the European Union as it is as well, and I am a pro-European. We should not repeat the mistake we made in the past. People have a lot of reasons to criticize the European Union, which is neither social, nor fair, nor just, and therefore I want another <laughs> European Union. We want to change the European Union. But we will not to give up the European Union. And therefore I raise the question, what is the idea of Europe? What is behind the Union? What was the spirit of those who created the founding fathers and mothers of the European Union? After the Second World War, in the second half of the 20th century. I think the idea of Europe is that countries and nations across borders, cooperate in common institutions, 
They give themselves because they know together we are stronger than alone. The countries and nations cooperate across borders, not only physical borders, cultural borders, economic borders, linguistic borders. Across the borders which divided us in the past, the countries and nations across borders cooperate by giving them a frame of institutions in which they can find a fair and just compromise by balancing their heterogeneous interests and structures. A frame in where no single country alone decides in which direction the Union should go. Where the big countries can't give lessons to the smaller ones. Where the richer decide what the poorer have to do. The countries and nations across borders cooperate in common institutions to challenge better the, to manage better the challenges of the 21st century. And wherever I am in Europe, here in Sofia or in Rome, in Berlin or in Paris, in Lisbon or in Warsaw, if I discuss with people the idea I just described, People tell me, yeah, that's okay, it's a good idea, go ahead. The idea of Europe, that countries and nations cooperate together in common institutions to balance their heterogeneous interests, to find a fair deal, saving the face for everybody. That's a good idea. I support. Over 90%, I'm deeply convinced, of Europeans share the view and say this is a good idea. But our problem is that more and more Europeans don't identify the European Union as it is with the idea. Therefore, those who want to save the idea of Europe must change the European Union. That's the task of the European Social Democrats. <laughs> and how to change it? We can escape, as always, to the debate of new Treaties, that's nice, and for sure, we need a new treaty, a better one. But our problem is we have only, for the time being, the treaty there. And therefore, we cannot solve the problems by debating a solution of Europe for, 20, 000, for 2020. We must try to solve the problems within the frame of the Lisbon Treaty. Because... Uh, a jobless young woman in Spain or an unemployed young man in Bulgaria is not waiting for a new treaty. They are waiting for solutions now. And therefore, treaty or not treaty, that a European Union is able to mobilize 700 million euros, 700 billion euros, for the security of the banking system. And the same union is debating since months about six billion for young unemployed people. That's the shame, and therefore people doubt about the European Union. <laughs> and I hope intensively that the summit next week, the European Council, Plamen Orishaski mentioned, and we will prepare with a meeting, a pre-meeting, that the Council will finally desi decide to anticipate the money, 6 billion, foreseen between 2014 and 20. That means the last billion should be spent in 2020. Yeah, my goodness, young unemployed people don't need money in 2020. They need it now. Therefore, we must pool the money now to invest now. But I must tell you, as one of the negotiators for the budget, for the multi-annual budget. Ivailo Kalfin is here and Aida Gada Yabal is here, two of our negotiators. We need to anticipate the money from 2020 to 2040, a flexibility instrument, which the, some of the heads of states, some of the important heads of states are 
proposing now for next week and their ministers of finance are refusing in the negotiations with the European Parliament exactly the flexibility instrument we need to anticipate the money. That's one of the reasons why the European Parliament is not prepared to say yes to a budget which is neither just nor fair nor functioning. And therefore the negotiations will continue. But I will insist, and I hope with your support, that the maximum of money will be made available next week in the frame of the European Council because the youth guarantee and concrete actions for employment of young people is vital for the time being. And I raise a question I hear I raised last week in Paris. How to bring people, especially young people, to work and to jobs and to employment? This is not only feasible with the six, six billion from the European budget. We need enterprises who are able to employ people. And most of jobs are created in small and middle enterprises, in smaller and middle-sized enterprises. And the biggest problem they have in Spain, for example, or in Greece, or in Italy, is access to credits. There is a lot of ideas they have to invest in renewable energy, in the infrastructure, in research, in development, in education. But wherever I discuss with them, the biggest problem is that they have no access to credits. And therefore, I raise once more the question. Until when we are prepared to accept that the European Central Bank lends money for 0.5% interest rate to banks, partially banks we saved with public money and the same banks instead to inject the money in the real economy are speculating with the money on the international markets. That's not the European Union we need. Or that the same banks, the same investment funds, the same assurance companies who have a profit from the low interest rates of the European Central Bank and I repeat, some of them were nationalized banks. How we can accept that they continue to pay billions and billions of bonus for their manager? In the same time where salaries and pensions are cut. We need more regulation on the financial markets. And I quote one of the CEOs of Barclays. In a hearing in the House of Commons, we didn't fail because we had too much rules. We failed because we had too less rules. Yeah, please, let's satisfy, satisfy the man and bring rules into these unregulated speculation markets in Europe. <laughs> Dear friends, the European Union it's a wonderful achievement. It brought peace, stability, solidarity on our continent. A continent during thousands of years, more or less without any day, without conflicts, wars, and bloody confrontations between nations and within countries. The European Union is an enormous achievement. It is a very precious historical achievement we should not play with. But we should here in Sofia today not neglect, not underestimate the mood. What are citizens expecting from us, the Social Democrats? This is the question for all of us. What are citizens, ordinary citizens, expecting from us? Concrete answers. And there is a lot of proposal of concrete answers. Three messages, messages and one conclusion. The first message is, 
only with cut in public budgets. We will never regain growth. Growth is only possible in a combination between that what Sergei Stanishev said. Reduction of sovereign debt, yes. This is a question of solidarity of generations. I don't want to belong to a generation consumpting in a way that still the children of my children have to pay for my life. This is not just. That's also fairer Europe. But we will never reduce the public budget Budgets only, the sovereign debt only by cutting. We need an increase of income. An increase of income is only possible via growth, employment, and in Europe, a transnational European tax system, putting burdens on the shoulder of those people who can bring their money to tax havens. And therefore, closing tax havens, financial transaction tax, and the combination of re reducing sovereign debt and investing in growth and employment in the same moment. That's what people are expecting from us. And I must tell you, this is not a social democratic program alone. Hannes knows it in the European Parliament for the resolution asking for this. We have an overwhelming majority across political tendencies. This is a position shared by a lot also of responsible conservative people in Europe as well. Therefore, this is not an old-fashioned socialist style. This is a need for a modern Europe. That's the answer we have to give. Second proposal. How we can expect that people trust the union when a whole generation in some of our member states feel that there is no place for them in our union? I tell you a story which is worrying me a lot since I met a young woman in Madrid last year. 26 years old, two academic degrees, jobless. In a debate, she told me I'm an architect and a psychologist. I said that's a strange combination, architect and psychologist. Why? The answer was, the architects have no clue from psychology, therefore they build houses nobody can live in. <laughs> Found it uh, okay. And I said, why the other way around? Architect? She said, the psychologists, the human scientists, have no clue from technical development. But we are living in the fastest technical development in the history of mankind. I thought this is a reason already to employ such a young woman. But she told me, I leave Europe. Here is no place for me. I go to Latin America. I didn't tell her that the ambassador of the country she want to go in Latin America told me some weeks before that his country will close the borders for Europeans in a foreseeable time. We are the richest continent of the world. But the distribution of wealth in our continent is so unfair that a well-skilled young woman, 26 years old in Spain, has to leave our continent and other continents close the borders for Europeans. That's not the European Union we need. And therefore, I say, to regain trust, the youth initiative is so vital for the time being, so important. Therefore, second proposal. Let's defend the interests of our young people. And the third proposal. The dream of the European Federalist was always that we have in Europe a moment where in all countries of the European Union, to the same time, citizens discuss the same item and then after a debate, a time of debate, there is a vote. The European election campaign ahead is a good chance if we appoint the common candidate and the PPE appoints a common candidate and the Liberals and the Greens and they are obliged, the candidates, to come in a dialogue all over to the same time in Europe with the voters to present themselves with their program and people can make a choice between one side and another side for the future of the European Union. 
to come away from this debate, yes, Europe or not Europe, which is always in favor of the Eurosceptics and the anti-Europeans. When Germany is going bad, we will not replace Germany by another country. Is Italy not going well? We can't replace Italy by another country. If Malta is not going well, we can't uh, choose another island. Then we change perhaps the government. If Europe is going bad, we can't replace our continent by another continent, our union by another union. The European Union will remain to exist. Therefore, it is not yes Europe or no Europe. It is how Europe. And therefore, I wish a competition that in the same time in Europe, all over to the same moment, citizens discuss our proposals, the proposals of other people, to identify with the persons who are running for the succession of Mr. Barroso. And then we have the situation where citizens are discussing different programs linked to different personalities, and then they vote. And the result of the vote, those who can, after the vote, build a majority in the European Parliament, should lead the European Commission in another direction than it is the case today. This is my third proposal. More fairness and justice in the financial sector, concrete steps and measures to protect the young generation of our continent and the debate about the future of the Union. And therefore my recommendation to think, what are citizens expecting from us, the Social Democrats, my answer is easy. That we organize the European Union and the member states in a way that we guarantee for everybody a decent life. What is a decent life? They are not expecting from us that, they, that we make them millionaires. They know that is impossible. A decent life is that a young man or a young woman finds a job with a salary from which you can live. And that young people, they expect from us that their children have a chance to get an education which is good enough to get after the education a job. And a job earning sufficiently money, their children, that one day they can find a partner and create a family and they themselves have children and that their children have a good education for having a basis to get a job and earning with the job a salary for a decent life. What is a decent life? An apartment or a small house that you can give food to your children, you can really eat clothes, a small car perhaps, once a year, a holiday. That's a decent life. And that their children one day have an education that they can get such a decent life. That's what people expect from us. And that's feasible on our continent. We can make it. We can make it when we avoid that in Athens, academics are in paperbacks searching things to survive and the richest Greeks can buy the most expensive apartments in Berlin or in London. Then in the same time, where irresponsible, where irresponsible people bring billions and billions of euros in tax havens, in the same time, more and more, millions and millions of people become in a situation of real poverty. Then in the same moment, where we are suffering all over in Europe, by unemployment of young people, about 1,000 billion euros are in tax havens. 
if we would have only 20%, not too much taxes on it, in Europe back, we, the Social Democrats in Europe, could easily organize what I call the basis for a decent life of our citizens. It is not about to transform our whole society. It is not about nationalization. It is not about old-fashioned socialism, as they are criticizing us. No, it is to save the idea of Europe that countries and nations across borders cooperate in common institutions because they know together we are stronger than alone as a tool to create a fair and just society where the richest continent of the world, Europe, allows not that more and more people become poor. We don't want to transform Europe in a continent of millionaires, but a continent where all people who work, who all people who have access to the public, to the society, have the chance to live a decent life. That's what these citizens expect from us, and that's we have to fight for. Thank you very much.